Thank you, ma'am. I'll just share my slide. Is my slide visible, ma'am? Yes, your slide is visible. Please begin. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank Yossi for giving me this opportunity. So I'll be speaking upon how to begin your research and publication journey as an ophthalmology trainee. So I'll be covering the very basic concepts like how we can initiate into this journey of research and publication. I have no conflicts or financial disclosures to declare. So, and what is the present situation in our country? As an ophthalmology trainee, the present scenario is we are expected to write down a lot of exams, appear in practicals and do lots of clinical work. But what about writing down papers? Does actually everyone, uh, like anyone is pushed to do research or publish? So this is the scenario in Indian, uh, Indian scenario is presently actually opposite to the Western world where people are expected to do some research work and know the basics before they enter medical school. So I will uh, cover a step later approach, how to start with the basic research work. So first thing is we need to actually know if we have a research interest. It is It should not be like my peers are publishing, so I have to do it. So this is not the way how we can start. So we need to inculcate the interest in ourselves before we start. We need to find out correct mentors. It is very important as Sen Gupta sir also highlighted to read interesting papers. That is the way how we can start up. So it, uh, how to find out a good research question, the importance of documentation, the basics of filling in the Excel sheet and statistics, the habit of developing uh, the writing skills. Then I'll cover about the basic language and reference softwares that are available, how to find out a target journal and how to do a groundwork. But it is important to remember that this all can be done once we have a good basic knowledge of our subject. So first of all, finding a good research interest in ourselves. It is very important to inculcate the research interest to find out like-minded people who can help us and who understand the extra efforts that we are doing beyond the clinical work. So uh, as a trainee, I would always suggest to start with something as basic as a clinical image, photo essay, or a case report. Later on, we can progress. And after seeing our name once in the journal, that is going to be a biggest motivational factor. And then we can put in our efforts and go to the original articles and review articles. It is important to join the research platforms like ResearchGate and PubLaunch because this will keep us updated on what is happening in our field and will keep us motivated to do uh, to go a step ahead. So this is a paper that was uh, like that highlighted the role of ophthalmologists beyond clinicians as researchers and scientists. And this is a new window that we all need to explore. Next is finding a correct mentor. So mentors, they play a critical role in guiding and shaping our career. They are the best reviewers. So before submitting to any journal, it is important whatever we have written to get it criticized at a local level because mentors will have a lot of experience and their critical comments can help us in improving our manuscript to a level that in increases the chances of acceptance to a higher level. Then writing rebuttals and revisions, this can be done only under proper mentorship. And it is important to pass the button to the next upcoming generation. So we need to look help from our mentors. And at the same time, we need to help the next coming generations also. Then next is the reading, uh, the need of uh, reading interesting papers. So going through the research gate, we went through one article, which was on scientifometric analysis. And then we discussed like, why don't we do it for our Indian Journal of Ophthalmology? And this was very much appreciated by the uh, editors also. So this is another article which came out of discussion when everyone in coffee shop was complaining one evening about headache. And then we did went back and did some research like how face mask has been associated with increased headaches in this COVID-19 pandemic. So this way reading interesting papers will help us in provoking our thoughts. This will inspire to do some similar kind of work. So it is like a cycle of thought, concept and action. So everyone here, we are having a thought of doing something. We do have concepts, but where we lag behind is in showing the correct actions at the time. The next is finding out a good research question. So a good research question will lay down a strong foundation for our paper. It should have a strong intuition. This will help us in developing lateral thinking. And once we do the literature review, we will know what is known and what is not known related to a particular field. Reading a lot of review articles, special issues and debated topics will help us in formulating a good research question. 
so documentation is very important we are examining cases day in and day out but at the end of the day if we don't have a perfect documentation we are not going uh, we cannot go a step ahead by publishing it so it is important to note down all the important clinical findings record good cl quality clinical images get the basic investigations done there itself get a consent from the patient for publishing his or her image and then we can decide whichever formats this fits in and we can go ahead for publication excels and statistics at least we need to know the basic rules of uh, filling in an excel sheet like how the coding has to be done so the, when we have filled in an excel sheet nicely this will help in um, creating a good relationship between us and the statistician also so the statistician will be able to comprehend things better and will be able to go a step ahead in giving more better results so there are some online basic courses also available but ug level statistics are actually good enough for filling in the basic excel sheets we all need to develop a good habit of uh, writing so we need to set the daily goals uh, fix at least some 20 to 30 dedicated minutes per day minimum and start writing small paragraphs daily we should not be copying down from anywhere but we need to read think put in our ideas and then bring it down on paper so we need to set a target and then follow it daily that is the most important idea which i feel will help any person who wants to start publication at any point of time then there are some language and reference softwares for our help like grammarly it is available in free as well as paid versions so this will help us in checking the language spellings alignment and spacing uh, issues so the basic grammarly is actually good enough and if we go in for paid versions that will help us in understanding where we have used some passive voices and will even give us options for rephrasing the sentences so the reference management softwares these are particularly helpful like mendeley zotero and endnote when we are going in for higher publications like when we are going for bigger publications in the form of original articles or review articles and especially when we are going in for some collaborative works next is finding out the target journal so there is a long list of ophthalmology journal we need to realize the importance of understanding the quality of manuscript and the content we have in our hand then next step will be to deciding on whether we want to go for a international national or a state journal based upon what actually we are trying to publish finding a specialty journal correct sub specialty journal for your manuscript is important then we need to see the interest of the particular journal it should be a research question should fit into the criteria of the interest of that journal then what article type do we want to publish what is the impact factor and acceptance rate of that journal and what is their reversal time it should not be like you have submitted a paper and for one year you do not hear back from the journal so that will definitely demotivate you from going ahead so doing a good groundwork is actually important then only we can think of winning the race so we should write start writing down the paper as quickly as possible once you see a good uh, interesting clinical case come down start working on that same day that is how we can go a step ahead than other people so we should find out a target journal go through the author uh, instructions prepare images in the format needed uh, like we can't be wasting on time again and again what dpi it is needed in a uh, jpeg format or a tiff format prepare tables accordingly then write down in the cover page uh, cover letter interestingly telling what is special in your uh, manuscript and prepare figure legends accordingly copyright issues should always be taken care of last and but most important thing is taking care of the publication ethics so we should try to avoid plagiarism in any sense we should know the basic publication ethics and follow it throughout uh, our journey of, of publication the conflicts of interest should always be clearly uh, defined the authorship criteria needs to be defined before we start doing the publication process itself to avoid any conflicts later on and in case we are copying any content like any image the prior permission should be taken to avoid any problems later on after publication thank you one and all thank you kirandeep for